This business lesson is about managing and forecasting your cash so that you can optimize your access to capital. So this is important to anybody who's in the process of planning and starting a business so that you can put together all of the different financial documents and spreadsheets and calculations that you're gonna need through the planning and launch phase of your business. And this is also important for any established business so that you can keep track of your budget, your cash forecast, and prepare all the documents that you might need in order to get a loan or any kind of financing for your business. I'm Matt Yerkes and I'm the founder of Cultivate. We started in 2016 helping entrepreneurs in Central Ohio to start and grow their businesses. So our mission is to help you to keep building a better business. And this presentation is gonna dig deep into the finances of your business and all the calculations and projections that you need to make for your business. So for some of us, that's gonna be a little mind numbing when we start to work in spreadsheets, but this is the most important thing that you can do in preparing for your new business or to manage your existing business for profitability and optimize your access to capital. Before we jump into all of the presentation, I wanna explain really the four main ways that Cultivate can help you to start or grow your business. The first thing that we do is we host monthly business lesson workshops at all of our locations. So these are an opportunity for you to meet with people in person, to network, to make some connections and, and find helpful resources. You can also hear these presentations firsthand and ask questions and engage with us. In addition to that, we put all of these lessons into our e-learning system. And when we do that, we add lessons, assignments, and other spreadsheets and other types of templates that are useful and part of the presentation. So those are only available to our members. We have a free membership if you're watching this as a video that you can sign up for at cultivateworks.org. But all of those are contained within the e-learning system that we offer. In addition to that, we have desk, office, and meeting spaces in all of our facilities. So these are helpful for those people that need a real business address so they can seem uh, legitimate online when people are looking and finding them. It's helpful to have just a desk or a place you can meet with clients in a meeting room. So we have those in all three of our business incubators. And then the last thing we have is a business dashboard and advising support. So we prepare for our members a business dashboard that we use to help you to move through this journey of launching your business or growing your business. So we keep track of all that through a business dashboard. And as your business is starting to launch and grow, we help you to keep track of all of your key marketing and sales metrics in this platform so that you can see the trends and make sure that, you, that what you are doing is working and effective. So this is an exclusive tool that we offer through Cultivate. We then pair that with our business advising support. So depending on your membership, you'll have access to different levels of a business advisor. It might be a couple times a year or it might be a couple times a month. So that one-on-one -on -one business advising with a person that is very skilled in helping people go through the, the business validation, business planning and launch of a business, or really savvy on the marketing and strategy and sales development process that can help you to grow your business. So our learning objectives for this lesson are to learn how to manage and forecast the cash that your business will have and do that in a way that can help you to optimize your access to capital. You know, to say it succinctly, these are things that you are going to have to do if you're gonna get any kind of loan or investment for your business. It's also something you're gonna to wanna to do before you start spending your own hard-earned money investing in your business. So that's, that's, the, that's the first thing we're gonna focus on and try and accomplish in this lesson. As part of that, we're gonna show you how to create financials and forecasts that you can use for your lenders and investors. We're gonna show you how to create and review a budget and a forecast uh, for your business. And ultimately the goal here is to determine how much is enough cash that you're gonna need for your business operation. So you know not only how much you're gonna need over the, the course of the year, but you're gonna know which months over the next year where you're gonna have a shortfall and you're, need, you're gonna need to supplement your cash with either additional loans or investment or from your own personal savings. 
So for all of our businesses, our survival ultimately comes down to cash. And that is why that is going to be such an important thing that you're going to have to demonstrate for any kind of lender or investor. They're going to want to know what kind of runway you have to get this business off the ground or to keep it growing to the next level. And I like to use this illustration of an impending hurricane. You know, we've all seen uh, these, these cones of uncertainty that the weather forecasters use when uh, a hurricane is approaching our shores. So they have a pretty good idea what's gonna happen in the next few hours. And as it gets further and further out, that cone of uncertainty gets wider and wider and wider. But what we're trying to do with our business is really have a forecast of our cash because our cash is what we need to keep our doors open. So with our cash projection, what we're trying to accomplish is much like this cone of uncertainty where we're gonna have a really, really good idea of how much cash we're gonna have in the next 30, 60, 90 days. And then as things get further and further out, that's gonna be less and less clear, but we can still make some predictions of, of what we're gonna have and what, where we're gonna be as a business. So we look at this eye of the storm that's approaching your business, this point at which your business is going to run out of cash. So when you run out of cash, the business is over. You can no longer operate, you are bankrupt, you have to close your doors. So obviously we have to take every possible mitigating effort to keep our, our business, whether we're trying to extend our cash through the launch and start of a new business, or we have an existing business, our goal is to extend the period of time where we believe we're gonna have cash to operate our business for as long as possible. And there's lots of different cash inflows and cash outflows that we can make adjustments to. There's different sources of cash that we can have for our business from loans and investment to sales. So there's all these kinds of things we're gonna be able to control. So you're gonna need to know how long your cash is going to last. And as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, this is really the, the foremost thing that is gonna determine our success as a business person. It's not how great your idea is, it's not how hard a worker you are or how creative and innovative you are. If you cannot manage the cash for your business, it is not going to survive. So we have to be creative, we have to think through all these issues, and some of these exercises are things that don't necessarily fall into sort of the sweet spot of what you might like to do as an entrepreneur. But as a business per person, this is imperative. So what we're trying to do is figure out our cash projection, how much our business is gonna have to operate. And you, you fall into several different scenarios here. You either make this projection and forecast and all these other financial tools that we're gonna look at, and you have some degree of certainty, at least in the near term, of how well your business is gonna survive, or, you just are blissfully unaware and you don't really pay attention to it. And you're just gonna go along uh, for as long as you can, as, for as long as money exists in your checking account. And um, that is not a, the situation that we're gonna suggest that you follow. So that's the goal for this presentation. So we're gonna look at several different financial worksheets that we have templates for that we can give you for free if you're one of our members. So we're going to step through these different financial worksheets that we have for you. But really what they're going to come down to is putting together all the things that you're going to need to optimize your access to capital. So you, these are things that you're going to need whether you're seeking an investor or you're trying to get a loan. But for the most part, since most of us are not in a position to get investment, I'm gonna really approach this from the standpoint of what you're gonna to need to do to get a loan. So there's, there's several different financial worksheets that we're gonna go through and show you how to use the templates that we've created, but we're gonna start by explaining how these first four things are important. So the first thing, any lender is gonna ask you for a personal wealth statement. They might call it a personal balance sheet. So this is how the lenders are going to know what your net worth is. They, they want to see that you have a positive net worth. They're gonna to wanna to know how much skin you have in the game to put towards this business or to use as your down payment uh, to buy a property or to invest in this business. So that's the first thing we're gonna look at. Another thing we're gonna look at is what we call your use and source of funds. So lenders, they want to know how exactly all of these funds are going to be used and they wanna make sure that they align with their lending purpose. 
So that's going to be really important when we go to get a business loan because different kinds of banks and financial institutions lend money for different kinds of things. So you could go to your community bank and try and get a loan uh, for something that they are not going to give you. Uh, but where if you went to a community bank and you tried to get a loan to buy a purchase, purchase a piece of property, if you had a sub, sub, sufficient, sufficient down payment, they would potentially let you uh, lend you money for that purpose. So we're going to dig into that more deeply. Use and source of funds. Your annual budget. So the lenders are going to want to know if you can generate enough profit to service the loan. And lastly is the cash forecast. So lenders... They don't want to give you funds until you need them, uh, typically. So the cash forecast is going to help us understand not just how much money we need, but when we need to have that money. So we're going to cover how to use six different finance worksheets, six different business finance worksheets in this presentation. The first is your personal wealth statement. It's going to show you how much cash you have on hand to contribute to the business. The second is an item costing sheet that will help you to determine how much it's going to cost to make the thing, the product or service that you produce. The next sheet we're going to take a look at is how much will it cost you to acquire a customer. This can be really tricky for a new business that doesn't have any historical data, but we're going to give you a model that can give you some insight into how to calculate this. The next thing we're going to look at is your use and source of funds, show you how much cash you need and where it's going to come from. So your cash contribution is going to be included in this and the cash forecast is going to show when and how much is needed. So some of these sheets are going to actually work together uh, as you're figuring out uh, some of these, these financial problems that you're facing. We're going to come up with your annual budget, which is your expected revenues and expenses. And we're going to come up with your cash forecast, which is a monthly breakdown of your revenue, expenses, and your cash position. So the first sheet we're going to look at is your personal wealth statement. This is going to show how much cash you have to personally contribute to the business. This is your statement of net worth. So you're usually going to need to show this to a banker to get approved for any kind of funding. And this is a document that we would recommend that you keep updated regularly. So anytime there's a major change in your financial position, whether you've purchased or sold an asset, a home, a property, or made a, a significant contribution to like a savings account or other kind of investment change, you're going to want to update your personal wealth statement. So in our business and forecast template that we give you as a Cultivate member, the first thing we're going to look at is this personal financial worksheet or your personal balance sheet. So on here, you're going to put in, of course, the, the date this was prepared, your name and address, and you're going to start by listing all of your current assets. These are the, the things that you have that are liquid, right? So there are your savings and checking account, you know, CDs that you might have, things that you can turn into cash very readily. Then in the next area are the intermediate assets. These are things that can't be turned into cash quite so readily, but they're assets. They have value. So things like vehicles, you know, furniture, collectibles, you know, CDs, other kinds of securities that you have that aren't immediately liquid, but you could turn them into liquid assets, you know, probably within 30 days if you had to, if you had to. And then the last area are these fixed assets. These are like longer term things that are really going to be hard to turn into cash, like your real estate, like your house, um, potentially even like an IRA or other kinds of, of savings, commercial property that you might own, things that are going to take a long time to liquidate if you needed to have that. But when you plug all those things in, you're going to have a list of all of the assets that you uh, that you have. Then on the right-hand side of this sheet are your liabilities. So there's your short-term liabilities. These are things like um, you know short-term loans that you have, things like that. Then you're going to have some intermediate liabilities, things like a vehicle loan, consumer loans, maybe a lease that you have on a vehicle, and then you're going to have these long-term loans. So oftentimes these are going to pair up with assets that you have on the other side of this sheet. So you're going to have things like real estate like your mortgage on your home, your mortgages that you have on commercial properties, other business loans that you might have that are yours personally. So that's going to list all of your liabilities. And then on the far right-hand side, we have your monthly payments. So this is where you're going to be able to put what the monthly cash outflow is for you personally. This is going to help 
help the bank understand, you know, how much of your monthly income is tied up in just servicing the debt on these liabilities. But when you we plug all these things in, it's going to tally down on the bottom what your your total uh, personal net worth is. And a bank hopefully is going to they're going to want to see that to be a positive number. You know, the the more assets that you have personally, obviously, the better for them. So the next worksheet we're going to go over is item costing. So this is where we figure out how much it's going to cost to make this thing, this product or service that you're selling. So the item costing sheet is going to be a basic way to figure that out. And you can complete these item costing sheets for things that are produced individually and things that are produced in batches. These, are, these costs that you're going to put in here are going to exclude some your overhead. So these are just like the incremental costs to produce the product or service. So it's not going to include things like your rent and your utilities, those overhead kinds of items. It's just the direct cost to produce this product or service. And you can use this to calculate something as simple as a sandwich if you're a restaurant. You know, what it's going to cost you to produce that sandwich or that to produce a meal, you know, that you have on your menu. But you can use this same method to calculate your item cost for anything. You could be a web developer or a consultant or a software programmer and use this same spreadsheet to break down all the different things that are going to go into this product or service that you're providing and use that to calculate your item cost. So our spreadsheet template that we give you as a member includes the item costing worksheet. So we have a couple placeholders, some areas there you can start to plug in costs for particular items, but we also have some simple examples. So the first example is just a turkey guacamole sandwich. You know, this is something that a restaurant might provide. So we're just giving you the example of listing all of the different components that go into this turkey guacamole sandwich. So we have things like the turkey, the cheese, the, the bun, you know, all those different things. We have in here where we are sourcing that component. We have uh, how much of the component is used in this, in this line item, what the cost uh, per that unit is uh, that we're putting into the sandwich. So we, we break that down for all the individual pieces and parts. In this example, we also include the labor. So you might be thinking, well, I'm a small business owner, I'm making this sandwich myself, or I'm making this website myself, but that's not a, a scalable uh, model that you're going to be able to use forever. So you need to plug into your item cost some amount to cover the labor, the time that it's going to take to make the, the item, the, the product or service that you're producing. In addition to the sandwich, we have we have guacamole that we're putting into this sandwich. So this that's an example of something that is made as a batch. You don't you don't uh, cut up you know avocados and and make guacamole for a single sandwich. What you do is you make a batch of guacamole and then you use a portion of that on the specific sandwich. So this is again just a simple illustration, but there's lots of business applications of how this works for our, for our companies. So. In this case, we have the cost, uh, all the things that go into this batch of guacamole, and then how many portions that batch of guacamole is going to make. And then up above in the turkey guacamole sandwich section, where we, we have the guacamole and the single portion and the cost per portion that is applied to that sandwich. So between these two different uh, item costing examples, the sandwich and the, the, por the guacamole portion that is produced in a batch, you can really apply that to just about any kind of business to start to figure out how much it's going to cost you to produce this product or service. So one of the hardest things to figure out when you're starting a new business and can actually be complicated to figure out when you even have an existing business is how much does it cost you to acquire a customer? So this is, this is an interesting question and one that when I ask a small business owner, oftentimes they will tell me that it doesn't actually cost them anything to get a customer because they're doing all their business development through their personal networking and um, or they're doing things on social media and that's how they're getting their customers. Well, it, it is not true to say that it doesn't actually cost you anything to get a customer just because you're doing this with your own elbow grease and like the sweat equity that you're putting into your business, there's still a cost 
for you to do that. But for most businesses, there's also you know, advertising and marketing expenses, everything from signage to uh, collateral that you might produce to your business cards to joining networking groups. All these different things go into what it costs you to get a customer. So there's a couple ways we're going to show you on how to, to figure out, start to figure out what it might cost you to acquire a new customer. And why this is so important is especially for those that are in the business planning stages of their company, one of the things that you're going to have to figure out is how much revenue you're going to be able to achieve and, and plot that revenue growth over the first 12 months or 24 months of your business. So that's going to be very hard to do because that your revenue growth is not based on the capacity that you have to service customers. You know, you, you going back to my cafe example, you start a restaurant business, you might be able to produce hundreds of meals a day in your restaurant. Or if you're a website developer or a business coach, you might be able to serve hundreds of small businesses a month. You might have the capacity to do that, but you're obviously not going to sell that much right out of the gate. So you're going to have to spend money, invest money into your customer acquisition to get new customers. And the amount of money that you have to spend towards acquiring those customers is going to very directly correlate to how fast you can grow the business. So this is gonna be probably the biggest limiter that you have on growing your business is, is figuring out how much it's gonna cost you to acquire a customer and then start finding ways to reduce that cost to acquire a customer because some of the things that you try will be uh, too expensive and will not be profitable to acquire customers uh, at that cost. So this is something we have to really get our hands around and figuring out you know, how we're gonna get customers and what is our cost going to be to acquire a customer. So to do that, you can first start with your existing marketing and advertising budget. Of course, you can only do that if you are an established business and you have some historical data. But you, we're gonna basically use that marketing budget along with some key assumptions to calculate the cost to acquire a new customer. So to do that then, we can either use some standard industry conversion rates, and I'm gonna explain this in more detail, or if you don't have standard historical conversion rates, uh, then there's some tools that we can give you to do some, some research, some keyword budget research in your industry to determine how much it would cost to really bring people to this first step of engaging your business which is basically to how much it's going to cost to bring them to your website or put some kind of eyeball where you can communicate to them what it is you offer and why buy from you. So with experience, you'll have this historical data and you can refine this. So we have a whole business uh, series called the growth track where we're helping uh, our members to, to, to do this and lower the cost to acquire a customer. But again, your marketing budget, your advertising spend, it's going to be the single uh, most important line item that's going to slow your business growth. Because if you don't have money to reinvest into marketing and sales and getting new customers, then you're not going to be able to grow at the pace that you could optimally grow at. So we're going we're gonna to then also use the count of new customers that you can, you can get with this average revenue customer. We're going to be able to use this information in our revenue projections and our budget forecast. So some of these sheets are going to work together, but we have to know how much it costs us to acquire a customer. So our business and forecast template sheet has a tab on it for the cost to acquire a customer. So again, there's two ways you can look at this. If you have historical data, you can add up all the money that you spend in marketing and advertising and all the value of your time to do that personal selling, you can add all of that up and divide that by the, the number of new customers uh, that you're getting in each month. And you can use that to, to calculate your average cost to get a new customer. But if you don't have that data or you have really a small amount of, the, of data, then this spreadsheet will give you an alternate way to come up with a projection for this. And I can tell you right now, for most people, the cost to acquire a customer is going to seem uh, very, very high. And it is very, very high, higher than most entrepreneurs realize. So again, just to kind of step back a, a minute, when we think about 
Um, I'll just go back to the food example of, of a cafe or a restaurant. You know, many of those businesses have turned uh, over the last year to food delivery services to help them to grow their business. Maybe they don't offer delivery, so they, they see these food delivery services like Uber Eats and DoorDash as a way to, to grow their business. Well, those food delivery services typically take about 30% of the customer's check that they use uh, to, to both uh, market through their platform and get you those customers and then execute the delivery for that order. So those restaurants are paying 30% uh, of, their, of their revenue to acquire a new customer. So that's, that's a way, one way to look at it. So that's a very, very high amount to, to get a customer, but that is not really that uncommon when we talk to businesses that are in software or technology the marketing investment that they're making to, to get new customers is enormous, and it's a large portion of the sale. So here's, here's how we kind of break this down in, in our model to help you come up with a number that you can use uh, to acquire a new customer. And then you can, the goal obviously is gonna be to find ways to drive this down, to keep improving the process so that you can uh, drive this number down and, and keep, keep working it down. So it kind of starts like this. The first thing is, uh, and, and you may not be using uh, any kind of pay-per-click advertising uh, for your business, and that is fine, but what this is gonna do is help us understand if we were to use pay-per-click advertising, so this is like Google AdWords, Google Ads, um, if we were, were to use some kind of pay-per-click advertising, there is a cost per click that we can use to deliver people to our website. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a, an advertising budget. So in this illustration, I have a $2,500 advertising budget, and that's gonna bring 250 people to my site, and it's, so it's gonna cost me $10 a click just to bring uh, interested visitors to my site. So there's lots of things that you can do to make, uh, hope maybe drive down the cost of that, but that's just the example that we're using right now. Once those people come to your site, only a portion of those people are going to actually convert and become any kind of lead. So in this example, I have a 2% conversion. So two out of 100 people that you brought to your site through your uh, pay-per-click advertising are actually coming to your site. So what that happens then is, is this, these, this formula is just gonna kind of keep building on itself. So it's actually costing us $500 per lead conversion to bring these people to our site. So this is obviously why it's very important in your marketing to have very effective messaging, to really uh, limit the people that are clicking on your ads or, or coming to your site in the first place, and then doing a really good job of attracting quality uh, leads uh, through the messaging on your site. So they, they click, they become a lead, they fill out a form, they pick up the phone and call you, and then only a portion of those are actually gonna be qualified leads. Not all of those people are really even a fit, even though they filled out the form on your site. And it's, it's especially true if your call to action isn't really highly correlated to the thing that you're selling, which is sometimes the case. So in this example, I have only 50% of the leads that are coming through this site are actually qualified leads. These are people that are genuinely interested and need and can afford to buy your product or service. So then those are people that you're typically gonna begin a professional conversation with if you're any kind of, uh, unless you're just like selling a, a product right on the website or a food uh, product. So in most, but many businesses, especially B2B businesses, you're going to then you know, have some professional conversation with them, you know, kind of move them towards the sale, give them a proposal. You know, in this formula, I plugged in 30% of those folks uh, would actually uh, be closed. So on the spreadsheet here, the main numbers that you would fill in to create a projection of your cost to acquire a customer are the fields that are highlighted in yellow. So your total amount that you have available to spend each month on your marketing. And then um, there's some things that you can do to figure out how much it's gonna cost you per click. You know, you're probably not gonna get that below a dollar. For some businesses, that could be $40 a click to bring people to your site, depending on how competitive and how high value those potential customers are. Uh, you can use some industry standard conversion rates or just leave the ones that I have in here. And then ultimately, you know, in this particular example, it's costing me uh, over $3,000 to acquire a customer. 
So I'm spending $2,500 a month. Um, you know, at that pace, I wouldn't even get a customer a month. You know, if I was spending $2,500, I'd have to spend, you know, $3,300 a month in this illustration to get one customer. And then from there, you can, you can figure out how much the value of that new customer is. Uh, maybe it's someone that's on a monthly uh, billing cycle and you can plug that into your revenue projection. And then as you have more uh, money to contribute to your marketing and, and kind of ramp up your advertising spending, uh, then you're gonna be able to uh, generate more customers and, and increase the revenue projection in your forecast. The next worksheet we're gonna look at is your use and source of funds. So this is a worksheet that you're gonna use several times through the process because you don't necessarily know right off the bat exactly how much money you're going to need, what the, uh, that you, what, how much source of funds you're going to have to acquire because you don't yet know exactly how much you're going to use, how much everything's going to cost, or where you're going to have to have cash to fill in the gaps. So the first thing I like to say when it comes to getting money, borrowing money, is the use of funds will determine the source of funds. And what I mean by that is where you're going to borrow from is determined by what you are borrowing for. So that, that is probably one of the most misunderstood uh, points of getting a loan uh, that I come across. So I'm just, I'll just say that again. Where you can borrow money from is determined by what you are borrowing for. So here's the thing. Lenders specialize. So they specialize in different kinds of loans. So uh, depending on what you're going to need to borrow money for, uh, will determine which lender uh, you might be best connected to to get that type of loan. So what happens oftentimes is, is entrepreneurs go to a bank to get a particular type of loan that is not in the sweet spot for that, that, that bank or financial institution. So they get a no or they say they can't be helped and then they leave you know, very dismayed. But there could be a different lender that does specialize in that kind of loan for that type of purpose. And, um, you know, from our standpoint as an entrepreneur, you know, it's just money, you know, it's like, it's just money that we need to start our business. But from a lender's perspective, it's super important, you know, what that money is going to be used for. So the next point to kind of add to that idea is that you may need to rethink what you're borrowing money for so that you can get the cash that you need. For instance, uh, I, there could be a financial institution that is willing to lend you money uh, for business expansion, uh, but that, that business would not perhaps lend you money to give you a line of credit to purchase inventory uh, for a retail store or for that business expansion. So you might be thinking as you're preparing your cash, your budget and your cash forecast, that you're gonna need a line of credit so you can afford to purchase inventory for your business, but that could be a really hard loan for you to get, but there, there could be a different loan that you could get that is really just for some other business purpose that uh, you legitimately need, like your business expansion and, and your, or to you know, purchase a property, and you're going to be able to use uh, that loan, still get the cash you need, but you're kind of rethinking what you need that money for so that you have better odds of finding the right lender that can make that loan to you. So this use and source of funds, it's gonna be modified several times. You know, it's kind of a living thing, but you're gonna you know, keep modifying this as you are figuring out how much money you're gonna to need to borrow and how you're gonna use those funds. Um, it's gonna change, of course, just until the point of time where you, you give this to the lender so that they know what you wanna borrow and what you wanna borrow the money for. Um, so we also, just as a point of note, we have an entire presentation on seven sources of cash to start, grow, or survive. We also have another uh, video on an interview with a business banker. So both of those are helpful if you uh, haven't really gotten a commercial or business loan before. Those are, those are additional video resources that I would encourage you to check out. So the use and source of funds is, is really just a ledger of sorts to list all of the different things that you're gonna use the money for and all of the different sources of where you would get the money from. So 
Uh, we have an example in here uh, that is for someone maybe starting a business, but this is something that you will need to do. For instance, if you were going to purchase a property for your business, a commercial building perhaps, and you knew you had to do certain things to improve that building. So you're gonna try and get a loan to not only cover the cost to purchase the building, but all the different things you're gonna to need to do to improve the building, to have it to be suitable for your business purpose. So in that scenario, if I was, if I was uh, purchasing a building, I might list out you know, the purchase price of the building. I might list out some, an, an amount for architectural or engineering fees to make my plans, you know, some permitting fees, you know, I have some construction costs in there to replace the roof or to add a sign, you know, to upgrade the HVAC. Uh, I might have a line item in there for furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Um, all those kinds of things would be listed in how I'm going to use the funds. And then on the other side, I would list the different loans that I'm going to get along with my personal contribution, basically my down payment and the source of funds. So most of the time, banks are going to require 20%. Uh, down payment. There are some SBA loan products that can go as low as 10% uh, for certain kinds of uh, uses. But you're going to need to show that you have this cash on hand. You're going to plug that into the source of funds, your down payment, uh, along with any other money that you're going to invest into this. You will then also be able to list out the different loans. So you may just get a single loan that covers the cost uh, for everything under your use of funds, or you may need to put together several loans in order to make that work. There could be a loan that's really just on the property, and then there could be a separate loan that is for like furniture, fixtures, and equipment, something like that. So all those things uh, would be shown on your use and source of funds. Whether you're a new business, just planning your business, or you're an established company, you have to have a budget. So the goal for an existing business is to evaluate your historical revenues and expenses to plan for the upcoming year and set yourself some, some benchmarks of what you're trying to achieve. Maybe you're trying to limit your spending in particular areas to a, to a specific amount. Maybe you're trying to grow your revenues to a specific amount. And this is something that is a living, breathing document that you're gonna have to you know, kind of manage your budget, manage to your budget. So we do the same thing for our households, right? We have a certain amount we can spend on our car, our house, our utilities, things like entertainment, travel vacations, same thing for a business, right? So the goal for a new business is to create the most comprehensive detail of anticipated expenses along with a revenue projection. So there's a lot of things that go into starting a business that you may not have on your radar. So our budgeting template has a, a number of these things that you're likely to have some amount of cost for. So hopefully that will be helpful to think through how that works. So what I'm going to do is actually step through the process first for a, what I consider like the easiest way to prepare your budget if you're an existing business and you have some kind of bookkeeping software like QuickBooks that you can use to, to, to basically export out your 12 months prior expenses and revenues. So in my example, the first step, if you have QuickBooks or some other accounting platform, is to go into QuickBooks, run a uh, profit and loss or income statement report. They might use those terms interchangeably. So what that's, what that's going to do is show you, uh, you'll be able to set your parameters so that you're looking at the uh, expenses and revenues for either uh, the 12-month prior period or just for last year, depending on how you want to do this. So you you would uh, set those 12-month uh, parameters to know how much you spend over the course of 12 months. And then your accounting platform may have a, a feature to uh, change between a cash and accrual basis. Uh, if you're like most small businesses, you're going to set that to a cash basis. That's basically saying um, it's keeping track of the revenue expenses at the time when you either receive the money or paid the money. That's what a cash basis basically is. So you'll, you'll run that on a cash basis. Uh, you can then export this to an Excel spreadsheet, and then uh, we'll take it from there. The next step in preparing your budget is to put it into the budget draft template that we have in our, in our spreadsheet that we can give you as a member. So you'll just simply copy and paste this uh, spreadsheet over into our template to make a draft budget. And then what we're going to ask you to do is to just delete the revenue and 
and all these QuickBooks like extra totals and calculations that they have, just delete those from your spreadsheet. We're not gonna use those. So delete all the revenues from there. We're gonna track our revenues separately. And then um, we don't really need all the totals that, that QuickBooks might put in the export. So just delete all those totals as well. And then uh, once you delete all those totals, including the totals that are for specific sections of your, your expenses, um, where it might, it might total up like your insurance expenses or things like your utility expenses, just delete all those subtotals as well. And then uh, just in the spreadsheet, just select the entire column and, and do a sum to total up uh, those numbers, do a fresh sum you know, to total up those columns uh, in the draft template. Now, if you are preparing this budget and you, you don't have 12 months of data, maybe you only have eight or nine months of data, and you, you then need to basically extrapolate, kind of figure out um, what would 12 months of this information be. You have nine months of information, you know, how much is 12 months going to be? So what we'll have you do is create a column for your projected expenses uh, just to the side of that. And then just make a simple Excel formula or spreadsheet formula to take the, the amount of money that you had for the, the time that you had. So let's say you had nine months of data uh, for your, your gas bill. Um, you would then just create a simple formula to divide uh, that nine months of gas bill expense by nine and then multiply that by 12. And that would give you a pretty good idea of how much you should budget for 12 months for most things. Um, and then just simply go down through all of the different line items in for those expenses and ask yourself the question, you know, which of these things are likely to be different than what this projected amount would be? For instance, you might have a projected rent increase that you need to factor into that. So your rent is just going to be more than what you had uh, calculated the projection or what it had been historically. Um, you maybe um, have have done something to eliminate a cost completely. Uh, so you'll, you'll, you'll go through and do all those things and kind of get that budget as tight as you can. The next thing we would like we'd like to have you to do is to we're going to break out our payroll expenses separate from like the core part of our budget. So here's how that's going to work. The reason why we're doing that is because payroll can vary from month to month based on if you have two payroll periods or three payroll periods in a given month. And it's also something that you may need to adjust if uh, your business is growing or if your business is contracting. So by breaking payroll out separately, it's going to really help when we go to plug this into your cash forecast. So we'll have it as part of your budget. So on the, the, the sheet that we had made that had all the budgeted expenses, uh, we're gonna delete payroll from that sheet. So there's a row for payroll, delete that from there. We're gonna, we're gonna use the payroll tab in our template to calculate payroll specifically. Now, if you don't have any payroll, you don't have any employees, you don't have any sub, uh, you, maybe you pay people as subcontractors, then you don't uh, need to, to worry about this step. Your payroll is just zero. But if you have payroll, just use the, the template to list all of your W-2 employees. You can put their annual pay. It'll kind of calculate what like some of the, the payroll taxes would be for that person. And then um, it'll total up the amount and, it'll to and then it will divide it by the number of payroll periods that you have. And then what you can do is figure out in which months you're gonna have three payroll periods. So if you do payroll every other week, then there will be two months in the year where you have three payroll periods. That is gonna, that's gonna be really important if your payroll is a significant amount of your expenses because you're, um, you know, you're gonna have just a much larger payroll cost in those particular months and you need to make sure that you're gonna have enough money to cover payroll. So um, in the area on the bottom, you can plug in uh, which months have two payroll periods and which months have three payroll periods. So the last step in creating our budget is to, is to really look at these, what I call these regular expenses. These are the things that are not fluctuating, you know, wild, wildly month to month. So the first thing is going down through every single item in our budget and really trying to understand which of these things can we reduce, which of these things need adjusted, which of these things we really don't have a, an adequate number, you know, in our budget for, we need to increase it. Then we also need to ask ourselves what cash flows, what cash outflows do we have that are actually not expenses that aren't even on this sheet? 
So for instance, if you have a loan, a business loan, the principal portion of that loan payment is not an expense. It actually only hits your balance sheet. So you are, that cash leaves your checking account and it goes out the door, but it is not an actual expense in bookkeeping terms. So you need to understand um, things like principal paid on a loan that, um, that are going to have a cash outflow but are not an expense as part of your budget. Also, if you are uh, like a small business that is uh, like an LLC or a sole proprietor and you're, you are not typically not paid as a W-2 employee, you're not paid as part of payroll, uh, you, you are paid with a draw from your profits. So uh, your draw from your profits is also not an expense for your business. So it's a cash outflow, but it's not a business expense. And then oftentimes your income taxes that, well, the income taxes that you pay uh, as the business owner are also often paid for you personally. So you just need to figure out, you know, how much you're drawing from the business and how much um, uh, in payroll and, t and t income taxes and that you're going to have to kind of also pull out from the business in order to, to, to make those paid. So now that we have our budget together, we can begin to put all of these pieces together to make our cash forecast. So the difference between the budget and the cash forecast is the budget is really just looking at our annual income and expenses. The forecast is going to really break that out month by month al along with our cash projected cash balance. So we can know uh, what months we're going to have plenty of cash and what's, what months we might not have enough cash because we have to make a plan for how we're going to adjust the business uh, for those months where we don't have enough cash. So the cash, fast is, cash forecast is going to show us what your monthly cash position is projected to be. This is like a living document that you're going to potentially even at some points in your business, you might be changing this daily as you're getting new inputs of information for new customers that are coming in or updates to expenses and things that you're, that you're changing. Um, probably at least on a weekly basis, you'll, you'll be changing this. And then we have to figure out what you can do to extend your cash so that you have enough money to survive. So there's things you can do to increase and speed up the cash inflows for your business. And there's things you can do to decrease and delay the cash outflows for your business. And then ultimately, you're going to need to update the source and uh, use and source of funds based on what you truly need to have for cash and when you're going to need it. So the first step to building the forecast is going to be to separate out from our budget the expenses that are really very uh, pretty wi wildly, you know, from month to month. So there's a lot of expenses that are just really about the same every month, like your rent. It's going to be the same every month. Um, you know, your phone bill is the same every month. But there's other things. Um, this is why we've already broken out payroll from our our like regular budgeted expenses. There's other things. For instance, there could be uh, project expenses, other other kinds of costs that are going to change a lot from month to month. So we're going to break those out. So we're going to leave on the the budgeted regular expenses tab the things that are pretty constant. And then we're going to remove those things that are pretty irregular and we're going to put those onto the cash forecast template. So here we're looking at the cash track template. So just to kind of orient you as to what we have here, on the top section we have our revenues. So uh, again, if you remember when we made the budget, we removed all the revenue from the, the budget uh, item. And here we're going to just list our revenues. So you can um, get as specific as you can be on here. Some companies have, um, for instance, if you're a food service business, you're a restaurant, you may have a line here for um, like your walk-in or to carry out food business, sort of the regular you know, customers that come in each day. You might have a separate line for like your catering orders because it's almost like a, it's, it's a different revenue stream. Uh, if you're a business that does a lot of projects, maybe you're a home remodeling company or a roofer or you're a, um, 
a web developer, then you're, you're doing projects, you might actually list out each customer, each customer on this sheet and then plug in the revenue amount in the month at which you expect to get it. So again, a lot of businesses, you get a portion of revenue when you sell the job and then a portion of revenue when you complete the job. So those would fall into two, two different months of revenue. So that's why it's really important to put those into this month by month breakdown like we have on the cash track template. So that's the top section. The middle section are your expenses. So this spreadsheet is already set up to kind of bring over your like monthly, like your average monthly budgeted expenses, those regular things like rent and utilities that you pay the same every month. It's gonna bring those over onto this sheet automatically. It's also gonna bring over your payroll costs based on which months you have two and three payrolls. It's gonna adjust for that. Um, but there's other one-time or infrequent expenses or irregular expenses that you might want to put on the expense area. So if you've removed an expense item from your regular budgeted expenses, then you're going to want to add it onto this section of the sheet. And you're going to want to put that at the month where you think you're going to spend that money or you're going to need the cash to spend that money. So this is particularly helpful if you're starting a new business you may need, you know, you're going to have a certain upfront expenses, maybe to uh, renovate your space. There's, there's all kinds of one-time expenses you'll have. So you'll have those, you know, in the month at which those are going to incur. And then the last section, the bottom section, is another month-by-month -month view that's going to list uh, your, it's going to basically take the, the sums from your revenue and your expenses for each month, and it's going to plug those into the appropriate column for each month. And then we also have a line, a place where you can put uh, cash outflows that are not part of your expenses. So this is an amount that would cover a draw that you're going to take from the business as the owner. Uh, and that draw would be inclusive of like the income tax amounts that you're going to have to send in uh, for your taxes. Um, that might include um, the principal payment for a loan. If you happen to have something like that, you could plug that in there as well. And then uh, it, you can plug in at the top of that block uh, how much cash you're going to start the business with. And uh, as long as you're keeping up your, your revenue and expenses in the appropriate months, then as you go down through uh, the months, your amount of cash that you're going to have is going to be as accurately as possible indicated uh, in, in the appropriate row. Now, what I like to do is at the end of a month, when we, when we have closed the books basically for the month, when we've, when we've completed posting all of our uh, bills, paying all of our bills and making all of our deposits, what I like to do is go in to this sheet and, you know, th these are all calculations, you know, in, in this sheet right now. But what I like to do, for instance, at, on the first week of February, I would go in to the revenue and expenses and projected cash amount for January, and I would overwrite that with actual amounts. So what I would do is go into my my income statement and run an income statement for January or profit loss statement for January from uh, QuickBooks. I would see what my revenue was, what my expenses, and I would plug in the actual amounts there, regardless of what we had projected they were gonna be. I'm gonna put in what they actually were, and then I can go to my balance sheet in QuickBooks and see at the end of January, how much cash I actually had uh, in my in my accounts, and I can take that number and plug that in. And what that will do is kind of kind of realign, you know, the projection with reality. So um, uh, that's something I would just do every month. But in the terms of just creating this forecast, um, doing all these things that we've set up to this point will help you to see how much cash you would potentially have on hand, you know, in each of the coming months. And if we go back to that original slide that I had that showed that cone of uncertainty with the hurricane coming in, you know, this, this, that, this section of the sheet is really where you, it's like your cone of uncertainty for the hurricane. So you, you know very well what your, if, if you've just updated January, you have a really good idea of what your February is going to look like. But as you go further and further out, you know, it's going to become less and less accurate, but at least you have, you know, the closest possible picture that you can of what your revenue and expenses and cash projection will be. So we've oriented you to the, the overall cash track template. Now we're going to take a look at some of these forecasted expenses. 
So the first thing we've already said that the, your amounts for payroll should not be part of your budgeted regular expenses. Those are going to be on the payroll sheet. So that's going to then bring those over onto this a uh, month by month expense section. And that's important because uh, like we've said a couple times, if you pay payroll every other week, uh, you're going to have certain months where you have three payroll periods and most other months you'll have two payroll periods. Uh, there's other things that you may, you know, have, have moved over here. These these varying expenses or one-time expenses, things like subcontractors that you're paying, one-time expenses, setup costs, uh, maybe maybe certain amounts that you have to pay for quarterly for taxes um, if your business is paying those. Uh, other like project-related expenses that you might have could be on in, in the month-to-month uh, expense breakdown. In the top section, the revenue section, this is where you know we really like to, to list out you know either major clients you know by revenue uh, could be you know that certain things that happen in certain months. Some customers maybe you bill annually, some you bill monthly, some you bill quarterly. Some are just have project billing based on when you hit certain milestones. So that's where you can plug all that into your your cash projection. You can add as many rows as you need, and I like to make sure that the revenue projection. Uh, that we have is consistent with the marketing expenses that we've already identified for our cost to acquire a new customer. So when you're putting in, if you have not yet started your business or you're planning this growth phase for your business and you're, you're plugging in like an, un, like a revenue for customers that you don't actually have yet, you know, we just need to make sure that that, uh, that, that number is grounded in reality based on what, you are going to be able to you have in your expense area for your marketing and what you've already calculated is your cost to acquire a new customer so those those things should all be uh, in alignment in, in the bottom section for the cash projection um, you know we, you can enter in the the total owner for your draws any principal and loan payments um, I also like to just tell people you know it's it's really challenging for small business owners to set aside enough money from their profits so that they have money to pay their taxes. You know, most of us have quarterly tax estimates that we send in. If you don't send those in, you've got to kind of make that up when you send in your taxes. So, you know, I personally like to just try and set aside 20 to 30% of my profits, not my revenues, but my profits. I like to just kind of set that aside and actually into a, a separate savings account just so that I have that kind of set aside. I'm not kind of mixing that up with, with my other money that I'm going to need to pay my bills. I kind of know that I'm going to have that to pay taxes when they're due. So finally, you know, we get down to the bottom of the cash forecast template, you know, and this is where we can see if we're going to have enough cash to, to survive, right? To, to get to where we want to go. We're going to, we're going to see here points at which we maybe don't have enough cash and we have to identify what the plan is to get through those periods. Are there things that we can do to change our spending, things we can do to change our revenues? Are there things we can do to um, get a loan that can help us fill that in? So this kind of brings us full circle. You know, how do we optimize access to capital? So there's all of that financial preparation that we have to do as a existing business owner or as a aspiring business owner that's creating a business plan. You know, we have our personal wealth statements because lenders want to know that you have a positive net worth and you have skin in the game. You know, what you have a down payment, you're making an investment into this as well. They need to know what your use and source of funds are. So lenders want to know how you're going to use the funds and that those funds align with their lending purpose. You're going to have to have an annual budget. You know, they want to know that you can generate enough profit profit to service the loan and you need to have a cash forecast. So they, so for one, so you know how much you need to borrow, you're gonna feed some of that uh, amount back into your use and source of funds so you have a, a realistic picture of how much cash you're gonna need to borrow. But also, you know, you're gonna need to know when you're gonna need that cash. So the cash forecast is where that's all gonna come together.